What springs to mind when I say London? You might say expensive pints or mediocre football clubs, but somewhere on that list will be one of Qatar's biggest assets. No, not PSG or FIFA, but the Shard. And this video will tell you the story how it came to dominate London's skyline. We need to take a trip down memory lane to the late 1990s when English fashionista Irvin Seller had a vision to redevelop the 1970s era Southwark Tower that was situated right next to London Bridge Station. Seller would fly to Berlin to chat to Italian architect Renzo Piano about ideas for a new vertical city within the heart of London. By 2002, plans had emerged for a new tower, but these were quashed by numerous public bodies until Big John Prescott got involved, ordering a planning inquiry for the development. After working his magic, the tower would get planning permission in November 2003, with the government stating Mr Prescott would only approve skyscrapers of exceptional design. I was flying, I had to go bullshit. Work on the towers would begin four years later, in September 2007, the start of the demolition of Southwark Tower, and by early 2009, the tower was gone, ready for the Shard to take its place. Piano would be the architect for the building and would take inspiration from the London spires depicted by Venetian painter Canaletto and the mass of sailing ships to produce designs for a slender spire-like tower just like the spires of the old churches, except this one would be a little bit taller. Piano's idea would be a building tapering towards the top with the concept of shards which did not touch one another. This concept would fragment the scale of the building and reflect the light in an unpredictable manner, diminishing the presence of the tower against the sky. So from a very early stage, a glass facade was chosen to give the best chance of achieving, in the architect's words, an incorporeal crystalline effect that would play with the light and the mood of the weather, whatever that means. It's all a fugazi. You know what a fugazi is? No. Fugazi. It's a fake. Yeah, fugazi, fugazi. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not fucking real, right? Its tapered shape suited various intended uses, both in the terms of elevation and area. Its tapering shape would also help from an engineering point of view, minimising the effects of wind loads at the top of the building. Construction on the tower would begin in early 2009 with the tower's foundations. However, with there being the Southwark Tower on the site prior to the Shard, there were already piles lurking in the ground, and to remove them would be too costly and complex. The answer was to insert new piles up to 53 metres into the ground whilst avoiding the old ones. The tower was the first in the UK to apply top-down construction, which allowed 23 floors of the skyscraper to be built before the basement underneath, which houses the building utilities, was fully completed. This would save massive amounts of time on the program, as well as that sweet dollar in the process. The structure of the building is rather odd, with a mixture of concrete and steel floors being used on the building, as well as a concrete core running up the entirety of the tower. Steel was used from ground level to floor 40, which would all be office space, so would benefit from large floor plans that the steel floors would bring. Concrete floors would then be used between level 41 and 69, which was to be occupied by a hotel and residential accommodation, where fewer ceiling mounted services are required and where acoustic separation of the floors becomes much more important. Steel would then be used on top to make up the spire. The steel sandwich would not only save on construction costs and increase floor space within the tower, but the concrete floors in the centre would help stiffen the building, reducing the impact of wind loading on the shard. By early 2011, the concrete core would be topped out, with the 66 metre spire being winched into place a year later, finishing the shard off. The tower would be opened on the 5th of July 2012 in a ceremony attended by Pizza Express's number one customer, Prince Andrew. Standing at just under 310 metres, the tower is by far the tallest building in the UK and for a long time was the tallest building in the EU until, well, you know. You all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? Given its location of not being in the city of London, it's a rather loner 
when it comes to the impact on London skyline, but has certainly racked up more awards for London over the past 10 years than a certain North London football club. You keep digging like this, you're going to go straight through to China. If it happens, it happens. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. We'd love to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year. What are your thoughts on the shard? Do you love it or despise it? Feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear them. This has been a civil conversation and I will see you in the next video.